Barbara, thank you for taking the time. Uh, what were the most contentious issues that emerged during the discussions with the Troika and the Irish government and uh, the Irish side and the formulation of the bailout programme? Uh, I think I've, I've touched on several of these. Uh, we've talked already a little bit about the issue of burden sharing going beyond just junior bondholders. Uh, I've also talked a little bit about the issue of uh, trying to seek greater stability of, uh, of uh, ECB liquidity support. Uh, in my written statement, I also uh, touched on the issue of the pace of fiscal adjustment and the timetable for uh, achieving the 3% uh, uh, deficit target under the excessive deficit procedure, so that was another issue. Uh, the issue of how to deal with the promissory notes and uh, uh, emergency liquidity assistance uh, was recognized early, early on that this would have to be addressed, but it was not uh, addressed uh, at the start of the program. That took some time to achieve. Uh, so it, in a sense, that was parked for a while. Uh, there was the issue of, uh, you know, how much should be set aside to support the banks? Um, the, uh, uh, and and we can, I, I'd be happy to elaborate on that if you want. Um, uh, so there were a host of, of issues that were debated and discussed. What was the issue around the promissory notes? Well, the, the issue around the promissory notes was that um, there was a very large outstanding stock of emergency liquidity assistance. There was the issue of how to deal with Anglo-Irish. Uh, there was the issue of the, uh, of the amortization schedule for the promissory notes. Uh, on the European side, there was the issue that this needed to be dealt with in a way that did not give, give rise to the perception of monetary financing. Uh, so a workable solution needed to be found that addressed all these issues, and that took some time. Um, in the operation of the Troika, uh, did you feel that the IMF were an equal player, or did you feel that the ECB or the Irish government or others were um, proportionately stronger in uh, promoting their point of view? Okay. I think it's important to step back and recall why the European institutions and European politicians especially, more the politicians, not really the institutions, were very keen to bring in the IMF into this process. I think the IMF was brought in to provide credibility on economic policies given its extensive experience on crisis management. Remember, the IMF had been in the business of crisis management for many decades and had built deep and broad experience on this front. For European partners, uh, however, crisis management was a relatively new task and they were less experienced in program design. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, that some European politicians also saw the IMF as a counterweight to the Commission which some creditor countries viewed as being somewhat feckless in this area. But the IMF did end up being a junior partner to the European institutions, and key decisions were taken by the Eurogroup, and hence I, I do think that overall, and I'm talking about the Euro area in general, not so much in Ireland, I think this, the, the, this did affect the IMF's ability to enhance the credibility of Euro area programs. I do think in Ireland, though, we were influential with our partners. We may not have won every battle, but we were influential. And we, and we did manage to steer things in a way that I think was right for Ireland and the euro area. I think I should also uh, uh, 
say that, you know, even though the European partners may not have had the crisis management experience to start with, they learned very fast. Uh, and they quickly developed the necessary skills and they gained the experience through hiring practices and also setting up new institutions such as the European Stability Mechanism. So I believe that now in 2015, uh, the IMF has no particular advantage on program design and monitoring for a Euro area member. You rightly pointed out the extensive experience and uh, that this was not new territory to the IMF. The ECB in particular would not have had the lifetime experience and expertise in circumstances of crisis such as these. Um, bearing in mind that by your own admission you feel that you steered things in the right direction but didn't win every battle, what alternatives should have been contemplated that uh, uh, had the ECB and the EU uh, sufficient experience in crisis management? Um, should have been followed? I think more equitable burden sharing is certainly one of those. I also said in my written statement that I would have been personally in favor of an even more gradual fiscal adjustment. Uh, because I think Ireland had already developed a great deal of credibility in addressing its fiscal problems even before the program started. And the European institutions were much too focused on their SGP rules and the excessive deficit procedures and so on. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's issues of those nature. You were wholesome in your praise for um all of the people that you worked with through the program, elected people, uh, um, people on the technical side, officials, and so on. Uh, obviously, the fallout from this uh, has seen um, um, uh, a contribution from the Irish people that is second to none, and indeed without any civil unrest that I'm sure your own organization would be very familiar with. Uh, would you say that because of the actions of the ECB and the IMF in not following a line that you yourself would have seen as more preferable given your experience as a more gradual fiscal adjustment, perhaps more equitable burden sharing, is it fair to say or not that the Irish people paid uh, an unfair price, an, an unnecessary unfair price in this regard? I, I think I, I would limit that statement just to the issue of burden sharing with senior bank creditors. I would not, uh, I would not widen that too much. But as I also said in my opening remarks this morning, I think there were better ways to deal with this crisis overall for the Eurozone. A greater degree of mutualization of the, uh, 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 of the problems that banks were facing uh, would, have, would have been very helpful. Instead, as the issue, the way it was approached was a coordinated mechanism for each country to address its own problems. So I think the issue of greater Eurozone solidarity would have been helpful not just in the Irish context, but in the broader Eurozone context. Just a couple of quick points, just specifically on the burden sharing. We had Kevin Cardiff, um, uh, who was here with us, and in his opening statement, he said uh, about these issues, and I quote, uh, there had even been early indications of a positive hearing from US uh, Treasury Secretary Geithner. We heard back, however, via the IMF team in Dublin, that instead of a positive response, that that had been a strong negative reaction from the ECB and from Geithner and others. Um, this was against a background here, too, where um, Cardiff had said that uh, they were led to believe that, that Mr. Strauss-Kahn, head of the IMF at the time, it was not only in favour of this approach, but believed he could and would undertake to persuade other major players in world finance, such as ECB head, Trichet and Geithner and others. Uh, would you agree with, with, with that? 
Uh, Senator, I'm not in a position to talk about uh, specific deliberations within the IMF or also uh, 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 discussions between uh, the IMF managing director and other G7 partners. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, I know that the uh, that uh, uh, Secretary Geithner's book has been referred to in evidence uh, in front of this committee, and uh, I, I, I would also just point to what uh, uh, Mr. Geithner said in his book. You mentioned earlier while you were able in a position to, to recall certain meetings and confirm they took place and even the content of some meetings, you couldn't go into the specific deliberations and we fully understand that. Was there ever discussions to your knowledge at the G10, uh, sorry, at the G20 in 2010 conference in South Korea uh, about Ireland entering a, a, a program? Uh, um, my, my knowledge of this is simply through what's in the public domain. I was not at the G20 meetings in Korea. Uh, would you have any comment on um, the ECB's refusal to cooperate with this committee? No comment. Did it surprise you? It, look, each institution has its own procedures and ways of operating. Uh, as you know, my current, uh, my, my former yes. colleagues from the IMF are not appearing in front of this committee either. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think this goes to uh, the procedures of each institution and their rules for dealing with national parliaments. And um, the rules, of course, of the IMF didn't prohibit you in your private capacity from coming, and we're all very grateful for that. Um, did, did you find it unusual that, given the same rules applied to the ECB, that Jean-Claude Trichet didn't uh, take a similar opportunity to attend? And uh, my decision to come here was very much a personal decision. And we're very grateful for it indeed. Um, thank you. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll move on from that. Um, can you... Um, you mentioned earlier that, that, that uh, a program was uh, underway almost before the formal IMF program, Troika program, was entered into. Right? Are you satisfied that, that the program uh, designed, I suppose, under the stewardship of the late Brian Lenehan uh, and the previous government, and continued to uh, a great extent by the current government, has worked as you would have hoped it might have? and indeed may have been designed by ECB and Commission and yourselves? I think if, if, if I look back to how I thought things might unfold back in November 2010, uh, a, a, a couple of observations. One is I don't think any of us realized that things would actually get quite a bit worse for a while. And they did get quite a bit worse. And this was not related to what Ireland was doing. This was related to what was happening in the broader Eurozone. Uh, so that, that part was a surprise. I mean, I think, as you said, the, the former government and the current government were doing their utmost to deal with the situation. But what they were doing was being swamped by what was happening, by conditions in the broader Eurozone. But once some of those broader Eurozone concerns and problems began to be addressed, I think Ireland ended up doing better than I thought it would. Uh, I, you know, some, I, I, in, in my written statement, I talked about some of the issues about uh, public debt sustainability and how that turned out to be better than we had anticipated. Uh, I don't think any of us foresaw that growth would rebound in quite a solid a way. Uh, but, you know, whenever I talk about growth, I think it's very important to move away also from the headline growth numbers and think in terms of levels. 
In terms of levels, it's only now in 2015 that per capita GDP in Ireland is returning to its level in 2007, and that's a long time. Uh, so, you know, there have been a number of upside surprises, uh, 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 but I think things could have gone even better if the overall macroeconomic approach uh, in the Eurozone had been stronger, and I've talked a little bit about that already, uh, and if there had been even greater Eurozone solidarity and mutualization. And just uh, before I give you my very final question, can I ask you, can you identify uh, the fundamental changes in policy uh, that, that, that uh, occurred in the change in administration here in election 2011? I think, I wouldn't say there were fundamental changes, there were a, a, a number of small changes and actually not a very large number. There was the issue of the minimum wage, which was taken, uh, which, uh, which the new government uh, did not uh, continue with, uh, with, the, uh, with the proposed policy of the previous government. Uh, there was a little bit more, uh, there was more emphasis, there was some switch in some fiscal measures uh, uh, geared a little bit more towards job creation. So I, I wouldn't say there were any fundamental Change, uh, changes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and then, and on the 12 quarterly reviews, right. uh, if there was a suggestion from a government that we wanted to adjust uh, the process of getting to the bottom line, were governments free to do that? So were they free to, to generate revenue from X or Y, or was that prescribed by yourselves? No, uh, uh, typically, the choice of measures is left to the government itself. Finally then, can I ask, um, were the social consequences of the bailout program considered during the program discussions? And how were these consequences uh, considered and what was the nature of the discussion? Of, of course they were considered because I think, you know, uh, uh, the social consequences was something that was very much in the minds of both the previous government and the current government. I mean, you know, the, nat uh, the, the National Recovery Plan was drawn up with the social consequences in mind. Uh, the new government also had, had social consequences in mind. I've, I've gone through some of the details in my, my written statement, but uh, I come back to the point that, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what we could do was to advise and try to steer the government towards measures that uh, uh, mitigated some of the social consequences as they chose the revenue and the uh, and the uh, 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 expenditure measures to undertake, and and I think you know the the data suggest that uh, this was largely achieved. I don't th you know uh, 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 the ESRI of course is the are the uh, are the real gurus on this, uh, but my my impression is that the. Uh, uh, the distributional consequences of this program, when one looks in terms of, of uh, disposable income that takes into account taxes and welfare payments and so on, has, has not been uh, 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 of any great significance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I just